I think the main way that I've used um, my digital profile to help my career is to really for educational purposes. So um, I have a Twitter account and I follow um, people or organisations on Twitter um, that provide information um, and it's also helped me to sort of follow conferences along um, when I've not been able to go um, and when I was doing sort of specialty jobs that was really useful to get some specialty information that I might not have got from my general medicine background. I've always tried to kind of separate out my personal life and my professional life and so I've, um, I've never used any profile that's sort of said that I'm a, I'm a doctor, um, I've got Facebook but it doesn't say anywhere that um, what I did at university or anything. Digital identity is very useful um, for us professionally uh, in being able to um, collaborate on um, different research projects that uh, we may go on to do. Um, I'm working on one or two just now and I'm on um, something called ResearchGate where uh, I'm able to you know, showcase my work I've done so far. As a future doctor, I think digital identity is hugely important. Uh, members of the public will see you every day, you wear a name badge, so it's very easy in this day and age for people to search you online. Um, so people can find out a lot about you if you don't have um, good social uh, identity security measures online. Um, at the same time, digital identity can be hugely important for networking and for finding potentially your next job, for finding a tutor or for, again, finding bits and pieces of research um, that could help you in your further career path. Because social media now used not only as socialising tools but also as professional tools, I feel like it's crucial to already apply um, our goals in terms of academic career as a researcher, for example. Um, and implement them into the way we use social media. So for example, LinkedIn and other social platforms can be used for networking with other professionals in the field. It's possible to find, to connect with people that you go to um, conferences with. It's possible to interact with people that you met in your professional environment and exchange contacts. So for example, on LinkedIn, whenever you go on somebody's profile, you can see the common connections that you have. So then you see that it's possible to get to that person through someone that you already know, which is an enormous help in maintaining and creating new professional networks. I think um, trying to determine what is professional is a really, really difficult question and I think as doctors we're quite good at knowing what's unprofessional or what's really unprofessional, but it's those things that fall in that line of just being a bit unprofessional and, um, and being okay um, is quite difficult. I think if it's something that you would be embarrassed if your patient saw it or if um, a colleague saw it, then I think it needs to come down and that's generally the standard that I use to try and determine what's okay and what isn't okay. The way I kind of try and think about it is I think about would I be happy if that was my doctor that I was looking at? Um, when it comes to professionalism as a doctor that it's not just what, it's not just what your opinion is, you have to think about the, the broad range of patients that you're going to look after and what a 90 year old lady might think is fine for you to do might be quite different from what an 18 year old girl thinks is fine for you to do um, and you do have to take that all into consideration. I was quite shocked by two uh, experiences that I had online. The first one was um, someone I knew, it was a GP, who I had looked up to check what practice she worked at and then found that someone had left her a review on ratemydoctor.com. Um, and it was it was quite uh, cutting, it was very, um, you know, they weren't happy at all with the care that had been provided and they'd given her a star rating as well, which was really low. Um, and I just thought for anyone else, um, who was this doctor's patient reading that, I don't think it would fill you with confidence that, that they were a good doctor, that they were someone that, um, you know, that you could trust. If you had a professional identity on something like LinkedIn, where the, um, where your whole kind of career is laid out and you've got kind of positive um, things that are being said about you, then if you're a sensible person and you read that this, has got, this person's got a very professional LinkedIn profile versus one silly review on ratemydoctor.com, I think that would kind of hopefully make the person looking at you think, well, I think they're mostly trustworthy and that one review is probably just something that just happened one time and everyone's allowed a, you know, a bad day. I think um, your reputation is hugely important because it is, you're, you're ultimately responsible for people's lives as a doctor and um, all patients have to put a huge amount of trust 
um, their doctor and therefore their doctor should be somebody who is trustworthy um, and they should feel confident in that trustworthiness. I think it's a, a just an unfortunate fact of, of life as a doctor that people don't hold you in the same way that they would hold other professions such as maybe accountants or lawyers, you know, you're expected to reach um, a far higher professional standard and you can argue about whether that's right or not and whether that's acceptable but unfortunately that's what our society is and so you are expected to behave um, in a certain way and, um, and if you don't then, you know, um, you may have to face the consequences of that and, and I think that's just something to be aware of.